Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. Okay, so calipers are fairly simple from what I can tell. There is your main caliper pin bolt here um, that is going to hold on this outer component. The question is, is how do you get it off? I don't really know. Get this rubber boot over the top of the, the actual pin. I'm not really quite sure what's on the inside of that. Wouldn't that be great if it was a torque bolt? Because, you know, they never use torque bolts on these things. It actually feels like an Allen head. So I had to go a little old school. I'm just going to use a nice big old Allen wrench. And these actually wind up being 7 millimeters. And two. Well, it looks like it's a whole pin. It doesn't look like it's a bolt. Yeah, it's a whole pin. It's got a uh, shim sleeve on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, now we need to take off the uh, um, brake pad springs to hold this into place. So I need to take a detour here. Uh, and instead of taking the brake pro uh, proportioning valve off last, we're going to take it off first. I haven't taken this off yet just because I didn't really feel like it, but as I pushed the piston in on the caliper over there, it started pushing brake fluid right out through the pipes. So I figured it would probably be a good idea to actually drain this thing uh, first and then put a cup underneath it so I don't have brake fluid running all over the place. So this is your... Uh, I think it's either your new no this neutral would be on the transmission this is your backup light warning or your backup warning light uh, switch or indicator and this is just held on by two little prongs all you have to do is separate those out easier said than done like everything else that's a real simple thing Move that wire. Then, you need to get in here with a half inch uh, wrench, whatever you may prefer, and crack the tension on these guys. Which, again, easier said than done. Oh, boy, these things are on there. Okay, the two main lines. Uh, this is a uh, quarter inch line, this is three eighths, but um, now the quarter inch line, strangely enough, has a larger nut on it. Uh, so I guess that's, that way you don't mix them up. And then all the other nuts on here. So this one was a half inch. These I, look, I think are three eighths. Well, I lied. Seven sixteenths. Uh, the problem with the smaller wrenches is there's a heck of a lot less leverage on them. Well, let's see if I can actually do this. Because I'm not comfortable with wedging that on there otherwise. So you've got this cage that goes over some of these, uh, these brake lines in certain places. Um, this stuff is uh, supposed to be protective. It's like a protective cage. Um, unfortunately, this stuff is... They didn't use stainless steel or even aluminum on them. So as a result, they completely rusted through or rusted out and provide more of a problem than anything else. Now this sucks. I'm going to be replacing these lines anyways, so do I take the chance and just break them off? Now, some of you may be asking, why am I going to replace the brake lines on this thing? Now, like everything else, it's severely dilapidated to the point where when I was unscrewing this uh, nozzle, the brake line just snapped right through. So what that tells me is there's not a lot of strength behind these things and there's a lot of weak points and it was only a matter of time. That does not make me feel comfortable for stopping power. 
So I've got these two unhooked, and then at that point, it's just the, the two front ones um, that run up to the actual uh, master cylinder. All right, now back to the caliper. You can hear the brake fluid draining out of the lines over there. And we've now released main caliper, or the caliper piston. Um, these things are being replaced, obviously, so you need to take off the banjo bolt. Seems to be 9 16 Sometimes you can use a hammer on these uh, wrenches to kind of shock the bolt loose a little bit. Easy way of doing that instead of sitting there fighting it. I got a funny feeling this is probably getting a little brake fluidy once I take this off. Nope, good. All right, first part of the caliper's off, at least your main piston. Now we need to move on to the caliper, caliper holding bracket. And so on mine, this has a star bolt on it. On the regular socket? Yeah, regular socket will work. All right, as long as you got like a 12 point socket on it, you should be okay. And apparently this is a half inch in size. All right, now that I've heated up just a little bit, these will break apart. Oh, that's so much, like butter. That's so much easier. <sighs> Definitely the good way, better way to go. Whoopsie, I'm not exactly coordinated today. Sorry. Right. Anyways, uh, that worked pretty well. Uh, you can see it took a little while to get that thing out because it just doesn't have enough pressure. Um, and the brake pads fell out as a result. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this brake job is one of the pads fell out and I noticed, huh, interesting, look at the cracks that are in those things. That's in your brake pad. That was not good. And these are fairly new brake pads. So that was not, that's not a good sign. Anyways, uh, now that we've got this, we're starting to get this closer to being loosened up. Now we just need to take off this bolt, if I can get in here. Just the angle doesn't work really well with the axle, unfortunately. Two main holding bolts, and then your whole bracket comes off. Well, that's all kind of cool. Look at that. We've got small features living in here. So there's your caliper support uh, bracket and the two little wire springs that hold the uh, anti-rattle clips for the brake pads. That will come all with the new one. I don't know if this comes with the caliper. I don't think it does. But even if it does, great. If it doesn't, then I will have to refurbish this. Now, moving on. What I was kind of hoping was just going to be the rotor. Apparently you need to take off the whole hub to get to the rotor. So this is not exactly the quickest brake job I've ever seen. Um, but we're starting to get into the closer pieces. You got your main drive uh, universal joint in here. You got your ball joint, upper, lower. Uh, you got your big castle nut that's holding it in place. The lower ball joint is just pressed into place. Um, there's a cotter pin in here that you need to take out. Mine are already rusted all the way through, so I don't know how I'm going to get that thing out. That'll be interesting to see. And then you've got your uh, steering and um, sway bar, or your steering and, well, actually these are both steering. Uh, tie rod in, I believe. I think this is tie rod, and this is steering. Yeah, it looks like it. So I think the next step is to actually take off the front part of the locking hub. <laughs> 